Alright. So right now the derivatives are gonna be pretty simple. We don't have any rules to work with, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the cool thing about right now. They're they're not too difficult. So they they should fit in to the context of the power rule, right? Otherwise, we have the, the constant multiple rule and the, the sum and difference rules and all that kind of stuff, but the, really the power rule is the one that feels like an actual rule. The other ones feel kind of like, yeah, intuitive. That makes sense. Of course, that's the way it works. Sarah? I don't understand why the a is Why the exponent's not seven? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we'll we will look at that. Um, is it because it's in the denominator? That has to do with it, yeah, for sure. Because one over x over eight equals what, an x to the negative eighth. Times. One over x to the eighth is x to the negative eighth. Here's the thing about currently the way that we're taking derivatives is by the power rule is basically like the one rule that we have. Like I said, other than those other rules, um, which feel like like they're not really helping us out. They're not really making this thing faster. They're just kind of, yeah, take the derivative of that minus the derivative of that minus the derivative of that. That makes sense. Uh, these these constant multiples out here, we don't feel like we're using a rule. But we need to write each of these as a uh, as a variable to a power, because that's the rule that we have. So that's how we need to approach each of these problems. So this one would be to a negative eight power, and then the same the power rule always works. Okay. So we just bring this guy down in front, negative 8, times x to the, what's negative 8 minus 1? Negative 9. nine. That's, a lot of people still go to negative 7, natural uh, mistake to make. So just if it's 1 over a vary. Oh. So if it's 1 over a variable to a power, you basically just make it a negative this power, yep. and then use the um, power, power rule yeah. with that. Yep. Right. That's it. If possible, it would be nice to, to boil all functions down to variables to powers, because we have power rule. The thing about, as we progress, is we'll get more and more rules, and we'll be able to differentiate more and more complicated functions. And that's going to be more and more challenging. It's gonna, the challenge is going to be, what rule am I supposed to use? Should I use the power rule, or the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule? What should I use? Right? That's what we're going to have to determine. And for the second part, did you take it kind of like how 1 over x to the 8 is uh, x to the negative 8? Right. Did you take x to the negative 9 to make it 1 over Yeah. X so this part is the same as 1 over x to the 9th. And you multiply that by negative 8, and you could write it that way. You could write it negative 8 times 1 over x to the 9th. There's tons of ways you can write it. And if you wrote it that way, I would accept that as well. Yeah. And that first one, mm -hmm. is it negative 8 because it's in the denominator? You just yep. bring it to the numerator. Maybe think about one, we could write as x to the zero, right? This is x to the zero, one, and it's to the zero power, except for yeah. zero is one. Zero to the zero is undefined. That's one. Over x to the eighth, right? If we were to express this as, uh, as x to a, a, a power, what do we do when we divide? We use x subtract. subtract the exponents. So we get x to the zero minus eight, so x to the negative eight. Not a, really a proof, but at least uh, something makes it feel a little bit better about it. This thing's the same. If we can't write it as a variable to a power in this section of the book, at least at this stage, then we can't do it. We have to be able to write it that way. Right? So how do we write this as a variable to a power? X to the one fourth. To the one fourth power. And then we do the same thing. One fourth out in front, multiply by one fourth. X to the what's one fourth minus one? Negative, negative, negative three, three fourths. Okay, so we have one fourth times one over x to the three fourths. If we uh, do that same thing as up here, and write the negative exponent as being in the denominator, and we multiply those together, one over four times x to the three fourths. What did we just find? What are, what are these things that we just found? Derivatives. Uh, the derivative. I shouldn't say equals right here. That's, that's very silly to me. That's very silly. They're not equal. We're 
finding the derivative. Finding the derivative, we're finding the derivative. <coughs> we found the derivative. What is the derivative? It's the function that gives us the slope. It's the function that gives us the slope. Great job, so far. You repeat that mantra to yourself many, many times before you go to sleep. <laughs> you'll be in good shape. Okay? That's crazy. Derivative. <laughs> Just say it like three times. <laughs> Nobody has to hear you. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so scary. <laughs> Just whispering. Your mom Okay. Make sure to light a bunch of candles. All right. So <clears throat> the derivative is a function that gives us the slope. Shh. So if you want the slope of a function, the slope of a tangent line of a function at a point, then you should probably find what? Derivative, right? So if you want to know the slope of the graph of the function at the given point, this point right here, then first we should find, 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 find the derivative. Okay. Well, what, what you need to remember is, right now at this stage in your calculus life, um, we have to write functions as, as a single variable to a power. We have not talked about functions raised to powers. So don't try to go and just applying this to everything. It's if you have a variable to a power, that's it. Anything else to a power right now, we've got to turn into variable to a power. Maybe a constant times a variable to a power. Constant times a variable to a power. If it doesn't look like that, we have no idea how to take the derivative at the moment. Okay. Yeah, so for this, would you take 2x plus 1, distribute it, like multiply by 2x to itself? So yeah. to say you get one quadratic function? Mode. Yes. Yes, so we write y as uh, 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Now we have a constant times a variable to a power, plus a constant times a variable to the first power, plus a constant. Now we're good. We can take the, vari the derivatives of constants and variables to powers, maybe constant times variables to powers, right? Um, so y prime is 8x plus 4. Plus four. That's it. Yep. That's it. And then... X is zero. X is zero. Why are we putting zero into this function? Because the, the point is zero. That's the point we want the slope for. That's, that's the x that we want the slope for, yeah. And so why would we put that in here? If we want the slope, why would we put an x in here? Because that's what you're, uh, that's the x in the slope at that point. So it gives you the slope at that point. Because the derivative gives you the slope at, a, at an x value that you plug in. So y prime of 0 is 4. <coughs> I know. What? When you do it, it's just it's like, that was so simple. And then you get it on our own, and we're just it's like, not it's like, it's so important to do on your own, right? Chinese lunch. Questions? I like Chinese food, too. I don't know Chinese. I'm sorry. I actually cheated. You spoke Chinese. Yeah, I cheated. <laughs> And got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> um, do those dates up there have any relevance to us? Not to us, no. Uh, what are they? What are they're they're, they're predictions <laughs> the that fountain. Algebra 2 made. About? About the water fountain. Where they're learning how to, oh, to oh, write oh. equations of lines. Oh. Yeah. And if we look at the water they're bottles counting, you know? Huh? Oh, whoa. Equations of lines? How to write them. Like to oh. take data and turn them into like equations. And like plug B. That seems so simple, right? Can we go back? So yeah, can we go back to this that? is their prediction for I think ten thousand bottles when the, when that meter on that water fountain right out outside the controls room. I'm gonna ruin their lives and just let it run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one, January first, they're saying it should be around fifteen thousand. Set a water bottle. That's the plastic we save. See, that's the thing that it turns a lot. Though, a lot. That people like. Put or wasted a lot of water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what yeah. You waste more. Does it count if you if you don't catch it in a bottle? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Your it just, you can just hold it your just, just goes for how it long it going. runs. So you can just uh, like. Because I thought with that little plate that's underneath it. No. I thought maybe if it didn't if it did feel water hitting it, it would it would, it would not engage the counter. That maybe would be so No, I tried. I tried it. I have a question for everybody. If you're like drinking out of the regular water parts, would it still count that water? I think no, so. no, 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 it only counts. I mean, the water, you're not the water bottle one. 
It only cuts water. Like, like it cuts off the water to one or the other? Yeah, it does. But it doesn't. No, it definitely just said it goes for a fact. No, it doesn't. Yeah. 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 No, it doesn't. Yeah. We're going to go yeah. test it. Yeah. 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 All right, be quiet now. We have lots of things to do. Last field trip. Last field trip. All right. You want better dollars? So, shh. Killing me. We're taking the derivative of this function, and we're we're really putting everything together, all the, the rules technically that we've learned, the power rule, okay? Well, it, before we can even take the derivative of just this, we have to recognize that what we're using is the difference rule, right? the difference between this function and this function, um, or the difference between this function and, and really like adding this function. Right? That's really how we're using the, the sum rule. We're saying that I'm adding this function to the sum of all these functions, and by the sum rule, I'm allowed to just take the derivative of the first one, and move on to the second one, and the next one, and the next one. So we're just recognizing, just that's to say, we're recognizing that we're using a rule. We're using the sum rule. So to take the derivative of this guy, we use the power rule, and the derivative is 2x. Then we move over here. Minus 3. Minus 3. The derivative of that would be just negative 3, because we multiply by 1. And then we get three times one, and we subtract one from the power, we get zero, so we wind up just getting three. Yeah? I'm just been confused about the whole f prime thing. Is that when you're like just finding the derivative of the function? Yes, when we put this little apostrophe here, we read it as prime, and that since we're, it's of f of x, it's the derivative of f of x. It's the function that tells you the slope of points on f of x. Yeah, I was just wondering what the yep. not prime Just means this is the derivative of f. <gasps> Uh, minus 3. Then we have 6x to the negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3. 6x to the negative 3. There it is. Which is wonderful. I mean, you can't even imagine how difficult that would be if we had to do the limit process. Yeah, that would be great. Exponents. Ooh, that would be nice. Okay, I have a question that's kind of going backwards. Yeah. I thought I got it, but I'm okay. setting it and I don't. 35, how you got from 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 to. We just use the, the power rule. So 2 times 4 is 8. We subtract 1 from 2, we get 1. So 8x to the first power. And then for 4x, we bring down the exponent of, of x, which is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. And we subtract 1 from that power, zero. which is 0. And x to the 0 is 1. So we have 4 times 1 is 4. But then where does the plus one? This one, the derivative of any constant is 0. So we just oh, add 0. Okay. Great to Thanks for asking that question. Not being shy. Go back. Okay, find any points where the graph of the function is horizontal, or the, uh, that's the graph of the function has a horizontal tangent line. Uh, so we should turn that into a derivative. So we, we should not be shy about taking the derivatives. Y prime equals 3x squared plus 1. And to make it on a horizontal tangent line. Zero. So, so, since, zero. so since this is the function, the derivative is the function that tells you the slope, right? then we want to find all points where the slope is zero, because that's the slope of a horizontal line. So, yeah, so this becomes a very handy little trick uh, very often throughout the year. So then we go about solving this. We get 3x squared equals negative 1. Maybe we see a problem already. x squared equals negative 1 third. And then we try to take the square root of a negative number, and it's not real. So oh, there's at least no real numbers and where this has works. a horizontal slope. So nope, not happening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? No, sir. OK. Oh, no. Let's pass in our homework. Uh -oh. That's our homework, and I'm going to bring up the AP questions. Oh, wait, no, it's just the way they're in here. What's the question? Aaron has a Q. Oh, what? Aaron has a Q. He has a Q. Oh, yeah, sorry. From the rest of the homework, if you have any questions, that's a good oh. thing for reminding you. <laughs> Which one are you on? Oh, 76. 76? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just no. no. Like this, 
my notes. Oh. 76. My homework is that pink piece of paper. Of x equals x to the fifth plus 3x cubed plus 5x. Use the power rule. Yep. Okay, we're going to take the derivative. So the sum of x to the fourth plus 9x to the second plus 5. Slow down. Okay, well, okay, I want people who are feel really confident about this okay. to just chill. All right. Stop throwing out all the answers. It's nice to know, and it feels good to be up to speed, but it also is detracting from anyone who needs to go a little slower. All right. So we've taken the derivative. This shouldn't be a surprise. We take the derivative probably on every problem in the homework. So we're learning how to take derivatives. Sarah? Oh, you're doing it. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So, um, so it says, okay. show that the graph of this function does not have a tangent line with a slope of 3. So you're going to get equal to 3? Right. If I plug numbers into x, if I plug 5 into x, and I do all the math, it'll tell me the slope at x equals 5. If I want to go the other way and say, what x is, uh, at what x uh, do I find a slope of just to say, I can force this to be equal to 3. And see if it works. The force if it works. Oh, man, it's like a question. Yes. So when you make it equal to 3, what does that tell you? The slope? This function tells you what? The, the derivative the is derivative. the function that tells you the slope. The slope, right? So that's when you, if you make x equal, like you put 3 in for x, it will tell you the slope. It will tell you the slope at x equals 3. So what does that do? So this is saying, I don't know what I'm going to put in for x. I know that whatever I put in for x, the result will be the slope, right? The slope of the tangent line at that x value. Okay. So if we set it equal to 3, we're saying we want the slope to come out to be 3. And where is it 3? Where is the slope oh, okay. here? So now we'll do 5x to the fourth plus 9x squared plus 2 plus 0. <laughs> and I tried to, like, do that. But we got a, probably a 5x squared and an x squared. And um, two. Nope. I need quadratic. Um, well, we're not being able to factor it, right? If we could factor it, wouldn't that kind of fly in the face of the thing we're trying to do? Yeah. We're trying to show that it's not possible? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, I'm trying to do the quadratic formula. Okay, let's try the quadratic formula. Okay. Oh, That's not that bad. This is a quadratic if you look at it this way. Five x squared squared plus nine x squared to the first plus two. Okay. We're talking about a warm nipple. Yes. Did another thing? Yeah. Because if you have a sum of squares and then a number alone without the x, it will never be zero. It'll never be. Oh, oh okay. So just. It will ever be positive. Well, it'll always be positive. We're trying to show. Well, okay, so yeah, this expression will never be zero, yeah. is what you're saying. <coughs> like. Uh, <coughs> Let, let's, let's say what, what would have to happen, and this will be sufficient for what we're trying to do. We're just trying to show that it can't happen. Let's just say we subtract 2 to the other side. Now we see what has to happen. This quantity has to come out to be negative. We ever get, by raising a number to an even power, adding it, adding it to a positive number, uh, times uh, a number raised to an even power, we ever get that to be negative two? No, yeah. not helpful. So that's sufficient. So that saves us some time. Good idea. Is it? You didn't do it on the homework? No, I did this. I didn't. You did this? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. We're gonna call it good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we did try the quadratic formula, we would get a negative and a square root, and you know that's not possible either. That ain't cool. Or at least it's not real. We want to keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pass it in. 
Passing the homework? Aaron, you need your name time, oh. sir. I have one right there. I don't know my number as well. What is it, sir? What? Classic. I go do this for students. Okay, thank you. I know my right. I'm not going to do it right now. Those text reminders are amazing. They really are. Yeah. I'm holding them for English now, too. And a lot of times she'll be like, oh, I actually don't want you to do that. So we get less homework and she texts us. Or we get more. Great. Or we get more. <laughs> it's true. Or we get more. <laughs> yeah, that one time she said. Like, the good at the bad. She said, like, don't forget like to read chapter one by Thursday. And it's like a page and a half long. Like, okay. <laughs> Don't forget. Uh, read that one page and a half. All right. Let's start with that, that first one, the pink one. Just take a look at that. Uh, see if you can write something down. I can't write that. Can you turn off the lights? Yeah. Yeah, hit the lights on your way out. No, mine's already good. Thanks, Rydog. Don't you worry about it. Thanks. Yeah, about seven more seconds. Take a look. I still can't read it. We're doing the purple one? This one right here. Oh, I was going to do the other one. That is maroon, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I said purple. Or no, what did I say? Pink. 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 That's more pink than that one. Like, I said the first one. Oh, okay. Well, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> never know. Okay, who's got an answer? Huh? NX. NX? NX. NX. Okay. 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 NX. Well, that's the DM. Awful. Boo. NX. Two, one less than the power. Yeah. Okay. Let's be real. You know what? Well, you go to college and get a degree and come up here. Okay, maybe I will. Give me four years. All right, what's the, the derivative of the sign? You remember? It's the cosine. 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 Yes, we know math. <laughs> okay. We did, uh, we looked at that <laughs> by using the graph of the derivative. We looked at like the area in the class last time. Um, if you take the sign, which looks like this, and you look at some, so start plotting some points that look like they would be the derivative. The derivative mm -hmm. is the slope. So the slope was zero here, and zero here, and zero here. All these guys, these flat tangent lines have a slope of zero. And then this slope was about, how big was that slope? One. 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 It looked like one. It turns out it is one. I can confirm that it's one. Uh, and then this slope looks like about negative one. So at this x value, we have a slope of negative one. And here's a positive one and a negative one again. And we keep that's doing one. this. Uh, no, that's a, neg that's a negative one. That's a positive one. Negative one, positive one. <laughs> And then if we connect all those those points, we notice, hey, it looks like another wavy function. And that makes sense, right? The sine is going up and down, and so its slopes must be kind of cycling through and repeating themselves. <coughs> so these, when we record these slopes and we, and we draw it out, this turns out to be, oh, 
flow. That's the cosine. Right? If we did it again and found the derivative of the cosine and plotted all its slopes, we would find that we wouldn't get the sine. We'd actually get the upside down sine, which is the negative sine. Okay. And so I'll take the negative sign with the negative cosine. Would you see the negative cosine with the sine? It cycles through over and over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, come over here to this one. Okay, take a look at 20. Okay. And see if you can think of what, what would happen here. here. There's no calculator on this one. Wait, so there's questions like, like those on the AP test? Is the person just asking? Oh, it does. Uh, oh, those ones, the first two, probably not. No. Oh, okay. I was like, those are super simple. These size functions are stupid. Differential mm -hmm. means it has a, uh, it has a derivative. derivative. Okay. Any thoughts? Any, just I know this is going on, right? I know this has to happen. I know this about the, the slopes, or I know this about the functions. Is there anything that you feel like is moving us forward? I know that um, on the graph at x, um, function has to be approaching one specific point. Right, the limit at uh, at, at one as it exists. Saying, right? So if if the limit exists, that means that they're they're meeting each other at the same place. And if you think about two uh, x plus a, well, that's a, a line with a slope of two and a y-intercept of a. Oh. Right. So that that y-intercept is just going to take that that line that has a slant of two. There's no changing that. But it's just moved that a would move it up and down the uh, would move it up and down the y-axis and, and it would move it up and down at one as well. Then we got bx squared minus 1. What kind of a graph is this? A parabola, right? And what is this b affecting about the parabola? Twice. Yeah, the wideness, the steepness of it, right? Now that we know about derivatives, think about if you took the derivative of this, the bigger b is, the bigger the slopes would be, right? So we can talk about it's affecting the steepness, the slope of the graph, right? That's what b is affecting. Um, Putting a b there makes the slope b times as much as it would be normally. Anyway, think about that later. So this is affecting the steepness. So we've got this steepness uh, fluctuating, and we've got this line moving up and down. We want to get them to meet up. That's one thing, at least. We want them to meet up. Is that enough for them to meet up? No, they have to be the same slope. Then they have to have the same slope at that place. <laughs> right? So one thing is, they have to meet up. So whatever two, well, let's uh, back up. Whatever two x plus a is at one, b squared minus one has to be that same thing at one. So two times one plus a has to be equal to. Um, actually, let me move these guys out of the way. Plus, because that's that's where we are, right? We're at x equals one at that place, right? Um, grab this, move it over here. That has to be equal to whatever this function is worth at 1. So we would plug 1 into that function, we get b times 1 squared minus 1. So 2 plus a has to be equal to b minus 1. But that's not enough information. That's, that's, that's telling us, like, hey, this could happen, but. Uh, there's other variables at play. Uh, so 
not only does it, do they have to meet up, but they have to what again? Are we saying what else do they have to have? It's the same. The same slope. Gonna have the same slope. If they don't meet up and have the same slope, then we're gonna have a cusp. Right? We're gonna have this pointy thing that doesn't have a tangent line. What's that? Could you possibly get A and B on the same side? Oh, you, you sure could, but you can't solve for A or B unless you know which, like, one of them. We don't know either of them. But we do know that the slopes have to be the same. Which, what are we learning about that has to do with the slope? Derivative. Oh, derivative. So let's just, let's just take the derivatives of both of these, see where it gets us. Uh, what's the derivative of 2x? Two. 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 Okay, so that derivative is 2. What's the derivative of A? Zero, because it's a constant. So the derivative of this first function is just 2, if that makes sense, because it's a line, and the slope of the line is always 2. Okay, so 2, the derivative of this guy is 2b two two x to the first. Okay, so the slope of that one is 2b x to the first minus 0. zero. Okay. Well, this guy right here is the, the derivative of this function, so this will give you the slope, and the slope apparently would have to be 2. Doesn't that make sense? When they meet up, it has to have the same slope as that line has. Okay. Um, and it has to have the same slope at uh, 1. Right? So we'll, we'll write that as well. Not just x, but we'll plug in a 1. So what's b? 1. b is 1. So then, boom. 2 plus a equals 1 minus 1. So a equals? Negative 2. Negative 2. Oh. <coughs> so you would like on the AP test you have the answers at your disposal, which are not like in. Some of them are multiple choice, like this. Okay. And then some of them are pre response. So you could have just like put every answer in. You could have, but that's really lame. It doesn't make you Is better. Is it a time right? test? Probably. Yeah. Crap. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that you just I got send the function for the few pieces, I guess you can say. Yeah. Set them equal to each other, oh, as that's small as you can. That's so exciting. Factor down as you can. And then find that's the derivative of the right each function, plug in the derivative, and then. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, we make sure that the, the functions equal each other, that they meet up, and that the derivatives equal each other, that they have the same slope. So we set the functions equal to each other at one, and we set the derivatives equal to each other at one, and that, that should be it. There's only two variables uh, determining our fate here, so that should work out. Um, now we'll take a look at this guy right here. Similar question. Calculators are okay though. Use our calculators. So let f of x be this piecewise defined function. If f of x is differentiable at x equals 2, what is the value of a? Well, isn't that the exact same question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. A, little a little, yeah, a little more challenge. But from our experience here, we can do the derivative too. Yeah, right. Do the derivative. Sure. Okay. So let's take the derivative of this first function. Two ax plus b. Two ax plus b. So two ax. Yeah. Is b the constant? So equal to. No, the derivative of like two x would be two. The derivative of five x would be five. It's just going to be whatever b is. Oh, so you can't go back and like do the constant. Not to this, no, because we're not going to take the derivative of the derivative for this problem. Okay. Okay. So then the derivative of this guy is going to be a, a, a. plus nothing. Nothing. But right, the derivative of 5 is, is 0. Okay, so we have the derivative of this first function, the derivative of the second function. Right, the slopes need to be the same where? Where do they need to be the same? Two. At 2. So we can plug a 2 in there as well. So 2 times a times 2 plus b needs to be equal to a. Sure. And this guy's just always going to have a slope of a. Where does the 2 in there go? So b. We have a and b, and so we need something else needs to. 4a plus b. 4a plus b. Okay, 4a plus b. Equals a. So we could like get b by itself, b equals negative 3a. But we don't know what a or b are. If we knew what a was, then we could plug it in and figure out what b is. Oh, 
Okay. Not only do the slopes have to match up, though, what else has to match up? The function. The function. So right? We got like uh, the slope. Well, the, the, the slope is definitely being adjusted, the, the steepness, and also like up and down is being affected here. Um, it gives it the shift up and down. And this one, the slope is changing. So we have a, a line that's always at the y intercept of 5, but as a changes, the slope changes. Right? Mm -hmm. So we have to lock all that in. We have to figure out what values of a and b would cause them to not only meet up, but you know, not at a point. We want to make sure the slopes are the same too. So we got to care, took care of the slopes part. And now we'll take this at 2. We want these two functions to be equal to each other. So a times 2 squared plus b times 2 needs to be equal to a times 2 plus 5. We got 4a plus 2b equals 2a plus 5. Okay. And this one's already solved for b, so if we could, we should probably solve for b here, and then we can set the two equal to each other. Yeah. Oh, so you could plug in negative 3a for b. Wait, you could, or you could just do substitution, put negative 3 in for b. You do that too. Would you rather do that? Yeah. Negative three. Negative three a right here is equal to b. We found. Oh, okay. So we can just take this and plug it in for b. There's only one b there. That makes it pretty easy. Four a. Plug in negative three. We'll get minus six b or minus uh, six a uh, equals two a plus five. So negative two a, uh, and then we subtract two a again. So negative four a, right? equals 5. Are we agreeing on that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And a equals negative 5 fourths. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's a. the value of a is negative 5 fourths. A, a equals a. I would just guess b like 5 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah you shouldn't do that because you've been wrong. Let's work faster. I'll be determined. Well, we're going to kind of have to. All of the above. Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay, we can kind of read now. The normal line, we'll talk about that in a second, to the graph of this at x equals 1. So x, x to the fourth plus 1 looks something like this. Right? It's a pretty steep graph. It's like a parabola, but it's deeper and at the bottom a little flatter. Um, at x equals 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it also intersects the graph at which of the following values. So normal is another word for perpendicular. Oh. So if we go to one and we, we put a point there and we look at the tangent line, the normal line would be the line that's perpendicular to that line. And it's saying also intersects the graph at which one of the following values of x. This one right here. Can you find the slope of that? Can you find the inverse slope of that? What would be the inverse slope? Negative? Negative. Inverse? Negative. 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 Is that? No, we don't need to take the derivative of the derivative. That's the chain rule. No, that's not the chain rule. I thought it was. It was a nice guess, though. Uh, y prime of 1, since we're talking about 1. 4. Equals 4. Nice and simple. So what's the slope of a line that's you know, perpendicular to that line? Four. Negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth. So the slope of this other line is negative 1 fourth. So we got this line right here, right here. M is equal to negative one fourth. Can we find? Oh, that's negative four. What's that? It's negative four. What's negative four? Okay, I'll wait. It doesn't ask us for the slope, but asks us for the value of x. This guy right here, that's what it wants. Where it also intersects the graph. How do we figure out where two functions or two graphs intersect each other? Uh, <laughs> you set the functions equal to each other. 
But we don't own the whole twenty five. So we don't? Why? We, we do. don't want you don't want it. You don't want to do the work for it. But it turns out that's what you need to do. Sarah? Piecewise function? No, because we have different functions. Uh -huh. We want to see where they intersect. Yeah. Which yeah. is put them together and see if there is any point that connects to. Put them together how? Okay. Um, our functions are. What do we want to see? Maybe we'll go through it and then when we have a little more you can go yeah. try it again. In the test? Which test? The test we just did? Oh, okay. Uh, I'll have to look at maybe your test again to see. Who knows? If you want to know where two functions or two graphs intersect, then the, the standard so way that you learn two is to what? Same outputs. What's that? They have two of the same outputs. They would have two of the same outputs, and so maybe what we'll get is like a quadratic that has two solutions. Like that. Yeah. Um, so usually what we do is take one function and set it equal to the other, because really what a function is is like blah 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 equals y. Y is the output. Right? Yeah. So. So this has a, a function, x, fourth, x to the fourth plus one equals the output. And this guy has an equation of some kind, blah, 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 equals also y. And if we set the y's equal to each other, then we're saying we want the same y's to come out of both of these functions. Then we'll find this y, and we'll find this y, and then we can find the x's. Yeah? Um, I'm just, quick question. Yeah. Okay, so you know how, so if you said negative one fourth. We said what now? N equals negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you? Time to go. Okay. Go four negative one four. Oh, how do you get from four to negative? So you get so you get four. You're good on that. I'm good on four. Yeah. Okay. So what we're saying is this: this line has a slope of four. Okay. This line is normal to that line, which means perpendicular. Mm -hmm. So something we learned about perpendicular lines is that they have opposite reciprocal slopes. Oh. Right? Okay. Okay. So the opposite reciprocal of four is negative oh, one four. Oh, so it's not just negative. So it's not <coughs> just one four. Yeah. So it would be negative, negative one fourth as well. So this line is a slope of negative one fourth. What else do we know about this line? Well, that, that's really about slope, right? It has a point at one and four. At one, one and four? four? Well, like one comma four. Oh. At one comma four? Yeah. Isn't it? It intersects it twice. Yeah. It, no, it, it runs one. one and then rises four from zero to the origin. So it would hit with the uh, tangent line. Probably. We don't know that it goes through there. Though, uh, it's oh. just a consequence of how I chose to draw it. Uh, yeah. But, uh, is it going to be the same thing? Yeah, let's just talk about this one on the AP test. Yeah. 
No, this one's fine. Just tell them, hey, <laughs> Look, hey, don't put that one off. The way we even found out about this line, that we care about this line, is that it is tangent, or it's, uh, it's perpendicular to this tangent line, which is the tangent line at this point, so it must go through that point. What is that point? 1, 2. Why 1, 2? Because I put 1 into the function. You put 1 into the function, that point is also on this function. Yeah. We'll put 1 in there, 1 plus 1 is 2. Yeah. So that point is 1, 2. Okay. Um, so we're trying to find this guy. Y equals Wait. mx plus b. Okay. So that we can set it equal to this function and find where they intersect. Yeah. So Wait. we've got m, it's negative 1 fourth. We've got an x, it's 1. We've got a b, it's 2. A y. Or a y, sorry. And we want to know what b is so that we can write the equation of this line and okay. set it equal to the equation of this uh, fourth degree polynomial. So we'll solve for b. b is equal to 6. Well, this is just negative 1 fourth plus b equals 2. So you one two and three quarters. So what? Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. We just add a quarter to 2. We've got 2 and a quarter. Uh, that's going to be 9 fourths. Yeah. Good guess, folks. So now our equation of this line is, if we, if we put this back into here, y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 9 fourths. <coughs> and if we set these two functions equal to each other, x to the fourth plus 1 equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 9 fourths. <coughs> um, Oh, here's why we wanted a calculator on this one. Uh, because to solve this by hand would be... Not very fun. Mm, I don't even know <laughs> what to say about it. So if we want to know where two functions intersect, we can use our calculators to find where two intersections functions intersect. Uh, over here. Y equals these, uh, x to the fourth plus one. And uh, negative 0.25x. Plus nine fourths. Plus nine fourths. Two and we can look at the graph. Magical. And that's just what we'd expect to see. This is, looks kind of like what I drew here. And then we're going to find the intersection. So we calculate the intersection of these two functions. This function and that function over near there. The x value is negative 1.11. B. B. Oh my. Okay. The calculator came in at the very end. We set, we put the two functions into our calculators and found the intersection. That is, this would have been hard to solve. Nasty. Yes, that would not have been very fun. Yeah. 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 You don't oh want goodness. to. Let's get started. Okay. Ready? What we have now, right now, at this moment, is the product, or not the product, the power rule. We have the power rule. If we can't write a function as like a, maybe a constant times a variable to a power, well, we can't do it. Okay. So right now, let's do what we need to do find the derivative of this function. I'm just making it up. One, three. Uh, now to use the power rule, we have to write it as a constant times a variable to a power, plus a constant times another, a variable to another power, plus a constant times a variable to another power, and <coughs> string those out, and then take the derivative. Or yeah, we have to write it like that, and then we can take the derivative. So, so, so make it happen. Come on, you lazy bones. So right. Hey. Not you. Or this one. So maybe uh, this guy. So do we just distribute or like? Do what you need to do to write it in a, in a way that has that we can apply the power rule. That's what I want you to do. Uh, if you think you should do that? You should do that. If you think you should do something else, you should do something else. Uh, well, that's that's all right. If you're in a place where there's something you think you can do and you don't know what else to do, do that thing.
Who's got a derivative? And what did you do to find a derivative? Um, I multiplied them together and then collected common. Okay, so like Ryan said, right? Yeah. Multiply them. Yeah. So we got uh, 6x to the third minus 4x plus, plus 2x plus, plus, plus 9x minus 6. Plus 3x. Plus 3x. What like terms? Uh, 6x cubed is only 1. Plus 11x yeah. squared. Minus x. Minus x? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Minus 6. Okay, so that's still y. y. So now y prime is? 18x squared plus 22x <coughs> minus 1. Minus 1. Did it. Yay! That's it? Well, that's the derivative using. The, just the, the power rule, okay? okay. I like There's that. another option where we don't have to multiply these things out, and I'm, I'm gonna show you this example just to show you that it works, to show you an example of the two derivatives being the same and found two different ways, okay? It might actually turn out to be a little easier to do it this way for this particular example, but there are definitely functions where it's easier or made possible to take the derivative with this next thing called the product rule. So we take the derivative of this function, and why do you think that it's called the product rule? Multiplication. Multiplication. Because we have actually two functions. We can view this as a function at times another function. Yeah. Okay. So, not trying to derive the power rule or anything. I'm just telling you what the power rule is. And it's for the derivative of a function times another function. And it's f prime. What's f prime mean? Uh, derivative. derivative of that guy right there. Times g of x. Is that derivative? No. No, it's just what you see there. Plus f, which is just the original f, times g prime, which is the derivative of g. So you can take the last of 2x plus 3 and g. You're, well, I don't need all the answers spouted out into the air, but we'll get there. Did you have a question? So it's also the power rule? Oh, I'm sorry, power, not power rule. Product rule. Oh. Okay. Confusing me. Thank you. Okay. Let's do it together. Nobody get ahead of anybody else. Let's just all calm down. Now we're excited, and that's exciting. Y prime, okay, let's just apply it nice and slow, and we're just gonna wind up saying that it's the same derivative. This derivative is probably harder to find than the derivative this way, but like I said, we'll, we'll then apply it to ones that we couldn't use this as strategy on. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so we just, according to this, take the derivative of the first function. What's the derivative of this function? Two. 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 Just two. Oh. Right, derivative of the constant of zero times g of x, which is just this guy. So we just rewrite this plus uh, f. Okay, so here's f. It's just two x plus three times g prime. What's g prime? Six x. Yep. Plus one. Plus one. This is just six x squared. Minus 4 plus 2x plus uh, 12x squared. We got 18, we got 2, 20x plus 3 equals 18x squared plus 22x minus 1. So, exactly the same. Just confirmation that it works, how to use it, what all this stuff means. And now we're going to use it on something that you couldn't possibly find the derivative of without the product rule. The product is two things that you can't just distribute together and get this thing with <coughs> powers and such. And uh, I'll just pull it off of one more question. F of 
of x equals square root of x times the sine of x. Okay. There's no way to just multiply the square root of x times the sine of x like we did the last ones, come up with this new function and apply the power rule to it. You have to use the product rule. Okay. So I'll rewrite it here. Uh, the derivative, that means take the derivative of the product of these two functions. f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. And of course, you could write g prime of x times f of x. Or, you know, multiplication is community, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Well, to take the derivative of this first off, we're going to have to rewrite that how? x to the half. x to the half power times sine of x. Okay, now we have a function, x to the half and the sine of x, and now we can use the product rule. f prime. What's the first part of this? What's the first thing we take the derivative of? Um, x to the one half. So what's the derivative of x to the one half? One half. One half. Negative one half. Negative one half. Take one away from one half, you get negative one half. Okay, so that's good. We multiply it by g of x, which is sine the sine of x. So just multiply by sine x. Plus? x to the half. So x to the half. The way it looks originally. Cosine, cosine, of x. cosine of x is the derivative of the sine of x, and we're done. Okay. <coughs> that's the product rule. I really like that. Absolutely well, that's hopeless. But now, yeah, that's the whole thing. I like that. Now, this it's not a pretty function, but it is the derivative. It is a function that tells you the slope of the, the tangent it's line of this function right here. That's the final result right there. Yeah. That's it. That is the derivative. I mean, you can write it differently if you want to. You could rewrite this as the square root. You can write this as 1 over 2 root x. Uh, with the sine x up here, just repurpose that 1 as an i. Plus, uh, we could say cosine x root x. So is that, yeah. what is that, what is square root? What is what? What is this? What is this? What is this? Oh. I just rewrote it like x to the negative 1 half. You could write it as 1 over x to the half. And x to the half is the square root. So that's down here in the denominator. Oh, multiply sorry. that by one half. Multiply that by sine. You get this guy. Yeah. So if you were to rationalize the denominator, right. yeah, would it be two x squared, and then I'll probably be sine of x times the square root of x. It would be, it would be sine x root x yeah. over two x. Because when you multiply the root x by root x, you just get x. Right. So you get square root of x squared. Yeah, let's just keep it at the first one. So, yeah, whatever. And any of those is going to be acceptable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even on the AP test, any of these on a free response question. Now, it's not the same on a multiple choice. If their multiple choice looks like this, you've got to know how to get yours to look like theirs. So that, you know. Ooh. I can see them asking that just to, just to be mean. You get your answer, you're like, I don't see this answer. Make sure that you think, wait. Is my, is my answer correct, but it just doesn't look like theirs yet, and I just need to mess around with it. If they don't have negative one-half powers, they're like, well, clearly I need to kind of write it the way they have it. Uh, yeah. With square roots instead, and, and no negative powers, and hey, they don't have any square roots in the denominator, let me rationalize my denominator and see if my answer looks like their answer. Okay. Great. Um, We could do a little practice for. It's not all the homework covered? No. Not, not yet. We have the quotient rule, then we have higher order derivatives. Yeah? Is it 2.3 or is it still 2.3? This is all 2.3. Okay. Are we. Um, do we we could learn about the orange piece of paper if we don't do practice. Would you rather practice? I don't know, I care. Rather do some practice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then. Just try five. Five is really similar. Oh. You might still get to the orange piece of paper. But how many did you say? Number five. 2.3, number five. Can you write a homework down? Uh, yeah, while you're doing that, I'll write your homework. Thank
I know, but could you imagine, like, all one? All right, let's watch. Let's watch a little bit. So we do the product rule with the rules, and so it would be. Well, wait a minute, Adam. Did you just wrote was equals there? Right. It's right. Which implies that it's a prime. Okay, there we go. Do I do L x or just say L x? Okay, and then square at. That looks like x cubed minus sine of x. Is that what you want that to be? No. Oh. Oh. Do you just do the plus and the parentheses negative sign of x? Or what do you do? I don't know. What, what does the product rule say about that step of the process? Is it uh, first times the derivative of the second? Is it times? Is it yeah. minus? It's times yeah. It's times. Oh, it's times? Yeah. Oh. The plus is in the middle there between the two functions. You can fix Maybe it with yeah. I can just do this. Yeah. Right? There you go. Okay. Very good. Oh, I did it. I didn't realize I was in the yellow. Ten, ten, ten. Ten, ten, ten. That's what I feels dope. Oh my god. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, nice! Wow. Oh my god. Well, that's not gonna count. One. You can skip your next one. That's not gonna count. Because I go down your pet. You just have one. Oh, that's it? Yeah, it's another participation in the Great job, Logs. Period two, Logan. That's your lucky day, go gamble. Ten. Yeah, yeah. Books and stocks. Oh, God. No, you don't have to do So, right here. I've got a prime of x times g. This is supposed to be a plus. This is a plus. Okay. Great. Great, wonderful. All right. Well, where you have a product, you usually will then wind up talking about what? Quotient. I have a question. Mm -hmm. On that last one, could we leave it like that, or do you want us to make it look like the one I have about is up there is like that? Um, I don't care. Okay. You need to know, you know, be able to oh, do it, yeah. but, I mean, uh, <coughs> oh, I, I didn't finish really saying what I was saying. The multiple choice, you need to be able to, to translate your answer into an answer that looks like their answer. On the free response, though, um, that's not a restriction. If your answer can be rewritten as the correct answer, the answer that they would use, then it's correct. OK. Um, so there's this thing called the quotient. 
Now that quotient rule, if we had something like x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x um, plus 1, something like that, and then take the derivative, we'd have to maybe do like long division of polynomials. It doesn't mean that we won't do long division of polynomials this year, but it does mean that that would be, uh, well, kind of a long problem. First, you would have to do long division of polynomials to figure out what that was equal to, then to take the derivative of the result, which probably has a remainder in it, and it can be a real mess. But the quotient rule, we don't really, we don't have to worry about that. So why don't we just uh, write the quotient rule here. The derivative of a function divided by another function is equal to f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x over g squared. Or easier to look at would probably be g of x squared. It's not as easy as the product rule. Product rule is kind of hard to mess up, right? If you take the derivative of one times the other, and then take the derivative of the other times the first one, and you add them together, you can't hardly mess up that order, right? As long as you're multiplying a, a derivative times a function and a function times the other derivative, and you add them together, it works great. But here, you have to get the order correct because subtraction is not commutative. You can't put this over there and this over there. You have to be sure. And that's why I wrote down the product rule the way I did. Whoa. No. Which is this way with f prime being first. f prime g is first. It doesn't have to be in the product rule, but it does have to be in the quotient rule. Oh, yeah. So you're really just doing us solid. Yeah. When you look at number seven. Huh? Wait, let me. I'm done. I made this up, by the way. I don't know if I'm doing anything on your homework. Um, oh, do you want to do that one? Or? Number nine. Oh, yeah. Let's do that one. But if we do. Right. We'll do seven. I'm <laughs> sorry, I didn't think about it. I just wanted something easy to know what I'm doing. It works just like, it's just a simple substitution, right? This this thing is f prime, this thing is g minus this f times this g prime over g squared. Just make sure that you remember this is f and this is g according to, to this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I know it can be confusing because this is f and that's f, but let's yeah. keep it straight. We, so we could write it differently too. We could write it as u and v. Right, those could stand in the place of problems. Oh, no, I hate you. Okay. Well, whatever you do. Like more, more magnitude. F prime. Yeah. <coughs> we usually use them for vectors. You and me. Yeah. So the denominator is g of x? Yeah, f of x, g of x. G of x. According to this, okay. right, as far as labels go in, in the quotient rules that I've written here. Okay. Okay, so f of x is this guy, g of x is this guy right here. Right. So f prime, right, that's first what's f prime. Mm -hmm. One times g of x. That's just x squared plus one. Minus f of x, which is x, times g prime of x. What's g prime of x? 2x. 2x. Just 2x. Just 2x. Over g prime squared, which will be what? 2x squared, which is 4x squared. 2x squared? No, it'd be 4x squared. 4x squared? Uh, it would be x squared plus 1x squared. G of squared. x squared, not g prime of oh, x squared. Okay. x squared plus 1 squared. So, so x squared plus 1 squared. So x to the 4th plus 2x uh -huh. squared plus 1. And it's 4x, no, not 4. No, it's not. 2x squared. It's 2x squared. So x to the 4th is 2x squared plus 1. Negative x squared plus 1 over. And that's your answer. I don't know if I'm really too bad. It's just, it, it might take a few minutes to make sure everything is correct. This is good black right here. So, is that the orange piece of paper you could figure out on? Yeah. That's the question. Now we have to learn the last thing, the last subject of this section. The derivatives of trigonometry. Higher order derivatives. Higher order derivatives. Ooh, 
You'll, <clears throat> I won't take a lot of time on this. You know the derivative of sine is cosine. You know the derivative of cosine is negative sine. If you look um, on page 123, um, then you have the, the remaining four typical trig functions. Now, if you think about it, the tangent can be expressed as what? It's equivalent to sine or cosine. Or cosine. It's also one of the cotangents and stuff like that. Yeah. Sine and cosine are, are ones that we know about. Sine over cosine is a quotient of two functions. So you can do the quotient rule on sine over cosine. And then you, well, you can derive the derivative of the tangent. Right? So the derivative of sine over cosine would be the derivative of the tangent. Whatever that came out to be using the quotient rule would be the tangent. So if you look over here, the derivative of tangent turns out to be secant squared. Simplify it down to secant squared. You could also do cotangent because that'd be cosine over sine. You could also do secant because that's one over cosine. Right? These are all quotients. You can use the quotient rule to derive all of these on page 123. And maybe we will if we have time. Right. Higher order derivatives. It sounds fancy, but all it means is if you take the second derivative, you're taking the derivative of the derivative. If you take the third derivative, you're taking the derivative of the derivative of the derivative. Okay? And that's all it is. Really like, like that's, we're done with that now. Kind of. If I want you to take the second derivative, you just take the derivative and you take the derivative of that. It's as, it's as simple as that. Is there a point when you can't get any more derivatives? Sure. Like, yeah. uh, if f of x constant. equals yeah. 2x squared plus x plus or minus apparently 3, <laughs> f prime of x is 4x plus 1, f double prime of x is 4, f this triple prime now is 0, and f usually we'll put like, we'll start writing a 4 there and a 5 and so on, is also 0, so then the derivatives after that would just all be 0. Okay. That doesn't always happen. What about if g of x were equal to the sine of x? We talked Ooh, about this earlier all today. Cycles. Yeah, it'll cycle eventually. We get cosine of x, g double prime, negative, negative sine x, g triple prime, equal negative cosine x. Would that be positive? The derivative of sine is cosine. And the constant multiple rule says multiply the derivative of sine to the negative. And then the fourth derivative is the derivative of cosine is negative sine times the negative is sine. We're back around again. Wow. Mm -hmm. We could say that this is the fourth derivative of the sine of x, right? It's fourth derivative of g. Another way to write it. Uh oh. Let's see. This we could say is equal to the derivative of the sine of x. This is equal to the second derivative of the of the sine of x. This is the third derivative of the sine of x. Fourth derivative, and if we just keep going on like that, this is just a notation issue. Orange paper. So if the question asks for the fifth derivative of cosine of x, we say you just keep on that process. Yeah, the fifth derivative of the cosine, you take the derivative of the cosine, and again, 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 until you've done it five times. Yeah. What is that derivative thing where it's written d over d of x? Um. Well dy dx is the derivative of y, and it's written that way because it's the teeny tiny change in y over the teeny tiny change in x. That's the slope, right? Change in y over change in x is slope. So I write the derivative of y is dy dx. We can write this, you know, y is just the output of the function, right? So it could be d of f of x over dx, but typically we'll write it instead of that way, we'll write it like as a fraction d over dx, or uh, yeah, d dx, uh, f of x. What's that? Yeah, orange is good. Well, let's say we have a function f of x, and it's a position function. That means 
at time x, you are so and such and such far away from whatever, right? Yeah. Now that's what we did in our lab, right? We, we threw a ball up in the air, and it came down, and we were graphing its position versus its time. Its height versus its time. Mm -hmm. Is it possibly saying don't be a down? A what? No, no, no. Okay. Okay, so the position function just tells you how far away you are from something given what time uh, you're at. Okay. At prime, is the change in position, right? Yeah. Change in position. <laughs> Because that's what f, that's what f prime is. That's what derivatives are. They're the change of something. Yeah. The rate of change or the slope. Change in position. What do we call the change in position? Change one. Change rate. Change. But if, if we look at a position function and we look at the slope. Velocity. Velocity. Yes. Velocity. Change. Let's take the derivative of that. The second derivative of position is the change of the change of velocity. What's the change of change of velocity? Acceleration. Acceleration. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh oh. Change of acceleration. The third derivative is the change of the change, the change of position, or the change of acceleration. B is called jerk. Huh? Oh. <laughs> okay. oh, don't be a jerk. <laughs> That's all it means. <laughs> Seriously? <coughs> That's all it means. What does jerk mean? Wait, what so does that... Yeah. Um, jerk you can change your velocity, um, you know, which, which means you're accelerating or decelerating, having a negative acceleration. Which means, you know, you step in the gas pedal, and as long as you're not going the same speed from time to time, you're not going 30 miles an hour, but you're speeding up. That's acceleration. You can have a steady acceleration, where you just you you gain the same amount of meters per second every second. Or you could also speed up faster and faster and faster. Your, your acceleration itself could increase or decrease, right? So I could speed up really slowly, and I could speed up really fast, and speed up even faster than that, right? It's basically if you're in your car and you're accelerating, you kind of feel that push. Yeah against your seat. If you're not, if you're accelerating uh, at a smooth rate, your body kind of gets used to it, and you just, you're going faster and faster and faster, but you don't feel that push, right? Uh, but if you feel that push, then you're, you're changing your acceleration, kind of. Anyway, the measurement of that acceleration change is called jerk. That's a word that means the, cha the, the change in the acceleration. Can there be a change in jerk? So, um, or I imagine there could be. I, I, I can't, I couldn't imagine why there wouldn't be a change in your, a change in the way that you're changing the acceleration. Right? Hold up. Patterns that we see. So that so equation. It's hard to conceptualize that. You know, like, I would feel like it's that's the concept. jerk we're changing. Oh. It's like the fourth dimension. Oh. Yeah, it's like the fourth dimension. No so that equation literally means like the change in acceleration. Yeah. yeah, it means the change in acceleration. It means the, since it's the three, it's the change in the change in the change of position. Magical. Now you know. Oh, give me like OBS squared.